Well, Harry, just yesterday we were speaking to people like David James, Sol Campbell, Herman, all players that have accomplished something. Yeah. But all three of them said one of their greatest achievements was Pompey and the FA Cup. Why yeah. would that be? Well, I don't know. It was, a, it was just an amazing time, wasn't it, John? You know, winning the FA Cup with Pompey, a club with such tradition as Pompey. You know, I still remember when Pompey was the team in the country back in Jimmy Dickinson's era, you know, just after the war time and that when they were... And then obviously gone through some, some ups and downs in their life and, and then Milan coming in and buying the club for about a penny when it was just going to go out of business. And I remember meeting him and telling him I thought it was a great club to buy, a great tradition. And then to finally end up in the Premier as we did and to go and win the FA Cup was, was just a dream come true, really. For you too? Yeah, absolutely. I remember the day that we got drawn in the quarter-finals. I was playing golf that day. It was I had a, The cup draw was coming through and I was on the golf course and I had a phone call, people listening live to the draw and I did a good drive and I had an eight iron into the green and I'm stopping. I said, Stuart, hang on, hang on. I said, the cup draw. Here's the cup draw. And it came up, Man United, Portsmouth. My eight iron went further than the ball. I I thought it's all. I was just wanted to get to Wembley, even if it had been a semi-final at that time. I thought let's go to Wembley with these supporters. That was my dream. Take Portsmouth to Wembley. So you know, then to go to Man United and win as we did, which was an incredible result. Uh, you know, and then to, to win the semi, obviously at Wembley, win the final at Wembley, go back the following year for the charity shield or whatever it's called in our community, whatever. It was great. Suddenly, Wembley was like a home ground at Portsmouth. It was an amazing time. When that team sheet came, came out at Old Trafford, you probably filled with even greater dismay. But did you have to instil belief that in a one-off game, you could go out there and do that? Yeah, we had good players, John, didn't we? We had some fantastic players, great characters. Um, and yeah, we were determined to go out and, and, and get the job done, you know. And uh, yeah, I had great belief in that group of players, you know. When you had a goalkeeper like Jamo, you always had a chance. You know, the game at Preston, when he was absolutely amazing that day, saved the penalty in the last minute or so. Then we got the other end and Herman scored. You know, so it was, yeah, it was a great, great run and a great time in my life. But I always say, people say, where was the best time? And I would have to say it was my time at Portsmouth. When you look back at it, Every game from the third round onwards, you won by a single goal. Yeah. Nothing was easy. No, every game was tough. Ipswich away was a tough game. So yeah, it was all all tough, but we uh, we got through and kept you say kept clean sheets. Difficult to beat. Um, but, you know, no, as I say, it was everything about it was just was just a, the day, the whole day, the semi. But when we got to the semis, you thought, now we've got here, we've got to get to the final. We got to win it. That was the key. We had to win it. You know. And that was a dream come true. I'd grown up watching FA Cup finals and to actually be on the pitch as a manager with a club like Portsmouth for me was amazing. That was a kind of new pressure, wasn't it? Because suddenly you went to rank outsiders, yeah. the favourites, yeah. and that, that brings new pressure. Yeah, yeah, we went to Man United, obviously, you know, not expecting to get a result, win there. And then suddenly Chelsea get beat at Barnsley, you know, and suddenly the whole thing opened up. Then suddenly there were three championship teams left in with us and suddenly we became red hot favourites so it was a big difference but we had to beat Man United away on the way people forget that in the semi in the quarter final to get there so we thoroughly deserved to win the cup that year those two days at Wembley do you have to absorb them and not let them go away too quickly yeah you've got to you know you've got to but we had experienced players in the team so I think we were and we had Canu who scored in both the semi and the final you know, I took him on, a, um, took him really, he was out of work. When I rang him up, he never had a club. And I said, listen, come in and come and play in the game, come and train, let's have a look at you. And he came down, we signed him. And what a career he had for Portsmouth, what a player he was. He was a genius, amazing footballer. Uh, and I say we took him for nothing. And he came in and just played for another four, three or four or five years or whatever at Pompey, didn't he? Greatest achievement for nearly 70 years. Then it started to unravel. Are, are you surprised how quickly it began to unravel? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, it was, you, you don't know, when you were a manager, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, John. You only know every player we bought nearly was, we sold for more than we paid for them. 
You know, we bought people like Lassan and Diara at a four and a half million, sold it for 20 odd. It was, you know, so, and the people were going about wages. The wages weren't extortionate either in comparison. Sol Campbell came for a quarter of the wages he was earning at Arsenal. I don't know, but you don't know what's going on. I didn't know. The, the, owned, the club was owned by, by uh, Mr. Guy de Mac, who was a Russian, who I didn't know very well. So I didn't know the finances of the club, but um, so no, it was a shame. I was sorry to say, but then that happens at lots of football clubs, unfortunately. Yeah, because you turned down Tottenham once, so was it too good to turn down again, given what was going on? At well, I didn't know that was going on when I left, John. No, I was, things were great. We were in the UEFA Cup. I just suddenly had this offer to go to Tottenham. You know, I'd, I'd, had, I'd been to Portsmouth, won the cup, had a great time, and suddenly Tottenham come along. I turned the job down two years earlier when I was managing Portsmouth to go to Tottenham. But I just felt maybe, you know, his chance wouldn't come again to manage a club, you know, that could, with the potential that they had. Uh, and, I, and to be honest, when the offer came, I've said many times, I think Mr. Guy Mac had an offer of £5 million for me from Tottenham. That's the compensation they received, £5 million. And I think he felt that he had Tony Adams there. And Tony, I think he felt that Tony could do the job every bit as I was, good as I was doing it. So why not take the £5 million? I think he, I didn't get any feeling that when I said, look, Tottenham had been on, that he had any real, and he spoke to him and suddenly he had a £5 million offer, that he really was too keen on keeping me. So I thought, well, in that case, I'll go, you know. How ironic, two years later, is it to meet Pompey in the FA Cup semi-final? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, going to, going to Wembley, it was amazing. We, uh, yeah, Avram was there, who I brought to the club, so it was great to see him. And if I was going to lose to anybody, uh, no one I'd rather lost to than Portsmouth, to be honest with you. I didn't want to lose, I can't sit and say I wanted to lose, but if I, if I was going to lose to anybody and see anybody get a Wembley again, it'd be Portsmouth. I can't let you go without talking to you about the jungle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell us a bit about that. That must have Well, been it was a long experience. slog, John, believe you me. It was a long old slog sitting, but quite boring. You know, I was in there with a group of people, none of them had any interest in football or racing or any of the things that interest me in my life. So, but no, it was a good experience. I enjoyed it and it's kept me busy since, that's for sure. I must admit, I looked at it at the time and thought, that's not you. But no. it, you, one of the things was, you, you were yourself. Yeah. That's what well, people... I'm always myself, John. I think that's what I've been as a football manager. I ain't never try to be anything that I'm not. People know what, what I'm like. I don't change, you know. I talk to everybody. I've time for everybody. I said I live my life, and uh, I just got on with it. And uh, yeah, that was me. So, and I think, you know, to be honest, John, since I came out of football management, I learned something again. I learned how to laugh. Yeah. Yeah, and to be happy because when you're in football management, there's not a lot of time to be happy. You know, you're getting beat, things are not right, you're winning, you're worrying about next week, there's always something going on. Suddenly, I had no pressure, come out of football. Yeah, went in the jungle and I really became a much happier person again. <laughs> so it was good. So you know, you know return to football management for you? I would love to go in somewhere with a young manager and uh, work with him and maybe be around a few days a week. Go to games on Saturdays. I would love that. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. I think I've, I, I know I'd still have a lot to offer. I know the game, John. You know, you don't stay in the game as long as I did. Manage the amount of games I did, unless you know what you're doing. So yeah, I think I'd have something to offer at the right. You know, if someone come along and said, "Look, how are we going to give it to a young man? We'd like you to come and work with him a couple of days a week, direct to a football, whatever." I'd love that. Yeah. Some would say you're in the perfect position now, though. You're on the periphery of football, still involved with it. But yeah. Not. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm off tomorrow night to do. Uh, Man United, Tottenham, I'm working for Amazon tomorrow. They've got the game tomorrow night. So yeah, uh, John, I could be every day I'm somewhere, every day, I don't get a day off. I can't remember the last time I played golf. Every day, can't remember the last time I went racing, you know? Every day I'm somewhere, working. But it's been, it kept me busy, kept me young, so I've quite enjoyed it. Harry, stay happy. Nice to see you. Good luck to everybody at Pompey. Play up Pompey. As I've said many times, John, it was the best time of my life there. I absolutely loved it. The fans were amazing. The football club was amazing. Still got loads of friends here, so I follow the results every week.